Good morning and welcome to TGIF. I'm Tim. I'm Gina. And we are so glad that you decided to join us today. I know we might even have some kiddos out there because we have had the most incredible week at VBS. Vacation Bible School. I know. Check are we going to take these shirts off? No, we've been wearing them all week and we will continue to. Aren't these awesome shirts? They're awesome shirts. We probably should wash them though. <laughs> <laughs> You're so funny. Rocky Railway has been an amazing experience this week. We've had 47 kiddos join us. And of course, it's been online. We do have a fun socially distanced gathering to wrap it up. But we love what the kids have been focused on this week. And that kind of gets us to our, oh, wait a second. It's two words, it's not one word. Can we do that? Is that legal? Yes. We'll get away with it? So we have two words this two week. Two words. God sighting. And that's really what we've been doing through the VBS is we've been promoting that part of the VBS and we had so much fun about picking out those God sightings. But it got us to thinking about the larger church. Mm -hmm. You know, everybody else that has the opportunity to do that each and every day. And so God sighting is one of those things that we enjoyed seeing kids interacting with where they saw God. It wasn't where we were forcing them to see God or where we were trying to say, this is what we're seeing. It was like, what are you all seeing? And then that built into just an incredible, incredible opportunity. And it was really a simple thing that we had the kiddos do. And I really think it's something we all overlook doing in our daily lives. So kids got a pack of sticky notes and it was simply for them to write down where they saw God in their day, whether it was through scripture, through a circumstance, through a person, or just through nature, and to just put them around the house. Can you imagine, as adults, if we took time to write down mm. our God sightings throughout each and every day? I think what we do is we get so busy focused on all the things that aren't going the way we want, especially during this crazy season, and we forget to look at where God has always been. It's not that He's just appearing, it's us opening our eyes to this God sighting. Yeah, and I think that every time we see pictures of the kiddos at home, it's like we are, we're saying, oh my gosh, this is God at work. This is so cool. And we had some great pictures this week, right, of some kiddos. And right. <laughs> As you can tell, we're showing you some highlights of the week because I love that the parents were sending those to us so we could see what the kids were doing on the other side of the screen. So Vacation Bible School is such a great outreach and it's a great way to connect with kids. But what I really hope and pray happens as that these kids, as they use the resources, their little Bible story they book, the book that they got, and the different little things that we had them do and participate in, that they take that and they continue that in their life. Because isn't that what church is all about? It's not just showing up for an event, doing another activity. It's about how you take it and apply it in other areas of your life on an ongoing basis. Yeah, and so what we hope they'll do is taking those stories and then say, oh, I want to read more stories in my Bible. And guess what? These little sticky notes, you can stick them all throughout your Bible and put little notes on them. So we are teaching some simple things for kids to start building the stories from the Bible into their own life so that those stories become a testimony. And I wanted to talk about a story today. It's the woman at the well. In the Gospel of John, we, we see the beginning of chapter 4, we see this story begin to develop of this woman at the well. And the transformation that, she take, that takes place in her life is huge because she goes from just saying, Sir, what are you doing here? To by the time she gets to the end of the story, it's like, oh my gosh, the Messiah. I just had, a, I just had an interaction with the God of all creation, mm -hmm. the Messiah. We have got to remember she went there to do a transaction, right? She went there to get water from the well. And she was going at a very, uh, not a great time to go, right? I middle mean, it was of the middle day. of the day, it's hot. And so she's going to the well, drawing the water up because she doesn't want to have these interactions with people that are going to criticize her. She just wants to go do the transaction and get out. And lo and behold, Jesus takes the opportunity that moment to step in and say, no, what he wanted was to have this transaction. He wanted to, uh, 
interact with her much deeper. Not just, uh, woman, I could use some water. It was, oh, woman, guess what? Guess what I know about you? Guess what I've, I've seen in your life? Guess what I want to provide for you? And that become her testimony. Because we think of worship, it's got to have these three or four characteristics in order to be true worship, right? What we see in this chapter is worship because what she has done is she has interacted with God, with mm -hmm. Jesus. That's what we need. We don't need to worry about the song. We don't need to worry about a lot of the details of going to worship. What we need to ask ourselves, are we just showing up to do a transaction? Or are we actually interacting mm -hmm. with God? And so she does that. And that transformation for her is huge because it becomes her testimony. She goes back, right? to the people that she knows and she starts professing what Jesus knew about her, what Jesus was doing in her life, and that she now received this forgiveness, this life-giving mm -hmm. water. And that's what BBS, that's what we try to build into the kids, that, that there is so much more here for you to learn. We want to make it much more than just a transaction, you know, just come to Bible school, mm -hmm. go to the next Bible school, go to the next Bible school. We want it to be this interaction where they are interacting not only with us and everybody working there, but they're inter interacting with Jesus and they're, they're embracing the stories. That's the big challenge. That is our big challenge in what we do each and every day. Do we just show up to work? Mm -hmm. Do we just show up, well, I kind of like the grocery store. I'm not thinking about anything but a transaction. Mm -hmm. I want to get the food I want. But are there opportunities everywhere you go every place you go, people you interact with, to have more than just a transaction with them, to have this interaction with them and see what God wants to do in their life. And that becomes your testimony. That interaction becomes your testimony. And I think we overthink that about the way God puts things and people and situations in our life where we just need to stop and say, wow, God, you were there. And then that becomes part of your story. And we and also had said that, that the component of acknowledgement, right? It's mm -hmm. acknowledging God is at work, acknowledging what God has done in your life. That's the, that's the heart of what you're saying. When you're talking to somebody, mm -hmm. when you're trying to uh, tell them or explain to them your testimony, it's this acknowledgement. Look what God has done. That's what the woman at the well said. Look what, God, this, look what Jesus told me. Look at what he, the mm -hmm. Messiah, Mm -hmm. did for me. And that's, we just hope our kids do the same thing, that they leave Vacation Bible School and they're telling the story to their friends and to other people in their families. Because I know for our kiddos who are now adults, Vacation Bible School was a big part of their life. And it wasn't just showing up, but it was how do you live those stories out? And how do you share those stories with others? So God sightings, God's everywhere. It's not like he just showed up. But man, we sure miss that sometimes in, in acknowledging that he is there. Yeah, I think that the challenge that we have in trying to bring this to you in a way that testimony doesn't become this threatening thing. You need to have a testimony. You need to, if you don't, I mean, I really encourage you to start reading the Bible and try to find those people that are giving their testimony. Mm -hmm. That's what this Bible is all about. That is the heart of this is that there are families, there are individuals, and they're given a testimony, an account for where they saw God at work. And that's why it's so important to us that in everything we do, mm -hmm. we acknowledge, you know, when you give us a compliment, first thing you'll probably hear us say is, well, that was God at work, because that's our testimony. And mm -hmm. the more we can do that everywhere we go, I think it sets up for us uh, deeper conversations, because then people say, well, how was that at work? How was that God at work? So it gets really challenging to, to open yourselves up, but at the same time have that testimony of acknowledging this is God at work. And that's what a God-focused view is. So we challenge you this week as you go about your daily life, work, school, home, that you look at it through a God-focused view of what He's doing. Because it's so easy to say, wow, we had a great vacation Bible school, 47 kids, you know, pat on the back, good job. Good job. But it's all about from the perspective of God's view of where he was at and what he was doing. And I hope that as a church that we take that seriously, that we look at it as a God-focused view in every part of our ministries here. Because just, just because we're not 
together in person, like in a normal situation, we have an opportunity to take this out even greater places through these videos and these live streams that you can continue to share. So our challenge that we leave you with is, do you have a God focused view? And maybe a little deeper with that is where do you need to uh, take your attention to maybe the places you've been missing? It's easy to overlook where God is at work if you're just so focused on what, if it's all about you. So we do send you with that, that idea that God is everywhere. God's sightings are everywhere. Our kids are telling us about it. Mm -hmm. Are you listening to them? So maybe that childlike perspective will help you. And even if you have to get the sticky notes and write them down. So go be a testimony. Make a difference in the lives of others by telling your story. We will see you next week on TGIF. Bye. Bye.